Hi, my name's Rob Strong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Have another calculator here to look at. This is one you might have seen in the previous video when I unboxed it, but I'm just going to have a quick look inside. Oh, it does have a battery. This doesn't bode well, but it just didn't come on. I'll show you the front in a moment. We'll get to, get to that plenty of time. Just want to check the battery though. Yeah, it's looking. Oh no, three volts. Yeah. It's a bit disturbing. I don't like that. Means, of course, that the device itself might be kaput. Let's check it out. So there you go, Casio UC110 thermometer calculator. It has not only a built-in sort of air thermometer, it also has a retractable probe. Stick it stick it wherever it's warm but uh, yeah that's it's kind of a shame it's not coming on so I'm gonna crack the lid on it and just see if it's sort of salvageable might be might not be you just never know really till you have a look it does look like there's plenty of screws though <laughs> first thing I've noticed I wonder what year this is But I like this. I think this is a really good gadget. The idea of having a calculator that does more than one thing is nice for a sort of modern thing because calculators are kind of useless in our current uh, level of technology. We Well, they're sort of useless and they're useful. Like, it's really weird because you'll use the one on your computer, but you'll know the one on your computer's crap and not really like using it. It's awkward to use, but then it's awkward to own a second device to do it. So. They can make them really useful, then that would help. So just trying to gently prise it with my nails. I don't want to resort to the spludgy, spludgerer. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a whole horrible retractor system in there for that probe. So there is a chance, of course, now it's going to just spring everywhere. When I say chance, it's almost a set. Whoa. Nice. That is some amazing engineering there. Look at that, what they've done. So they've actually got the probe on a retracting wheel with leaf springs to make contact with that. That is very, very nice. In fact, I'm just going to put my fingers over it. And look, you can see the badge there. Behind the badge are these holes, and clearly they actually marry up. Again, putting that down very gently off camera. They marry up with these pads here because they're either test pins or uh, they just sort of program something in. So you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, B, A. Something to do with mode or temperature type probe uh, elements. Very clever, very clever. Look at that. And uh, there's a chip here. It says T9126H, whatever that does. And then there's a crystal, oh, the capacitor. So I kind of think that's probably a timing circuit. And could that be it? Obviously, on the other side of the board is the keyboard membrane. Maybe, just possibly, that could be a temperature device. But I don't think so, like a um, thermistor type thing. But look at this. This is a really weird ribbon cable. It's so fine. It's double layered. It goes to this chip basically look I'll just show you it's just that is an IC you know when we talk about those blobs I'm gonna put this down very carefully so I can show you zoom right in well, at least that's as far as I can zoom but remember we talk about those blobs that you see on PCBs where there's just a blob of something that is what is underneath the blobs so you can see there's the piece of um, silicon and the very fine legs coming off it here and again they're normally protected by a blob of something but here they're not they're just Exposed, and not only that, they're actually on a ribbon cable, a flexi. So that's just a flexible PCB with that one. That's that's really impressive. So I'm just going to turn this over. Oh, look at that! That's really crusty looking. And I don't know why, if the capacitor's leaked or someone's tried to repair it, but I'm almost scared to try to repair this because when you solder on this, of course, you destroy the. Um, Flexi PCB. So I'm just going to try to clean up what I can see and I'm bending it over, but again, some of this, even this 
tracking looks like it's got a bit tarnished. Very tricky one to fix, so I'm just going to look for my little brush. I do have a very tiny PCB type cleaning brush somewhere, but uh, it's eluding me, so I'm going to resort to the one on this sort of end of the bottle of flux cleaner. So I'm just going to spray a bit of flux cleaner on it and then just. It's almost too wet now. Just need a touch of the blue roll. Just going to rub it through there. Let's have a look. So, yeah, that might be cleaner. Who knows? It's very difficult to tell. So we can't really try this though without actually just assembling it because there's no easy way of hooking up to these terminals unless we solder on something. I don't really fancy doing that just yet. What I'll do is bend out the leads or the legs of the battery contact so there's a bit more spring in it. Just gently put that on. I'm not doing it particularly seriously, I'm just clipping it, I won't screw it, because we of course need the door for that. Come on. Come on, you brute. No, it's not liking it. Not liking it, I'm afraid. Again, let me just check this battery. Just slightly worried. Don't know the provenance. No, it is. It's a full three volts. That one. It, that's probably a new battery. It's just something with a calculator. Looking for some reset buttons. No reset buttons. Nothing. Oh, there is a reset button on the front though. Duh. Hiding in plain sight. Come on, reset. Do something. No. I think it's dirt, guys. That's a, s a sad state of affairs. Um, so eyeball it again. Oh, I, I tell you what, that capacitor. So it's a 2.2 .2 microfarad electrolytic. I'm going to have a look in my box, but I really, really don't think I've got one. Not got a two microfarad, but I do have a one microfarad, so I don't know. We've got nothing to lose, really. I think this is probably dead. Um, but, you know, we'll have a go. Just let the soldering iron heat up and just try to swap that in. Just checking on this, though. It, it's sort of the document that came with it. So it did work briefly for two days and then died. So before I do that, I'm going to just try another battery. I think I just have the last last one in a card just worth trying before we try to solder that because that is the most likely thing that will kill the uh, that flexi PCB nope I've definitely done my due diligence now new battery and everything it's not having it let's do this thing so of course we're not going to be exchanging it with a like-for-like -like component in terms of its value, but I think it's worth just trying something. If we get some life out of it, you know, it might. Um, if you get the screen to flicker, something like that, you know, at least it's we're on the right track. Then we can bother sourcing a better component. I'm trying to get this bloody thing open. It was so easy a moment ago by. You know, just by hand to do. Now it's being very awkward. There we go. It knows. It knows what's happening. It's trying to fight me. Please. I want to live. I want to live. Let's see what we can do with it. Gently again, bending this over. Crikey. It's so fragile. Just gonna tin my soldering iron. It's it's not really playing the game. OK, 
getting a bad smell off this. <laughs> it's really hard to describe the smell actually, it's very acrid. Just looking for some flux. Let's get uh, a suitable flux for this. Again, trying to, to very gingerly bend this over. Don't really want to destroy it just by bending it. Come on. Oof, the smell of it. Jeez. It's, uh, it's weird. Ah. Come on. It's definitely like a solder, but it's it's just reacting very strangely. Maybe it's like an ultrasonic weld. Hmm. Okay, might be safer to try to just cut that off, I think. Let's just do that. There we go. Let's get the legs prepared on this one. Just looking at the board, see what the spacing we need is. It's got a very weird pre-bent spacing on this. To, we have to unbend <laughs> first. There we go. Brute force and ignorance. Always in massive quantity here. Let's cut that off. creating a, a tool here to keep that held back. There we go. So just off camera, I've got a bit of solder and I'm just tinning the two legs of that electrolytic capacitor. And then we're gonna see if we can just solder that onto the old legs somehow. Ah, the whole pad came off. Yes, that's good. That's a good thing. What's happening now is a good thing. That's actually the old legs coming off. Get off. Gives us a lot better chance now. a bit quiet now it's because I'm trying to concentrate on this bit here it's a bit fiddly at best understatement of the year that is connected it is on that's it it's a bit bigger as well not sure oh that no, just about fits under there let's clean that up So I think that's about as good as we're going to get here. I don't think there's much else we can do. The chip there looks good. All that looks good while well soldered in. There's nothing really much. Apart from popping on the lid and uh, yeah, seeing if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, yeah, it doesn't work. Just seeing how this thing must have gone on. Something like that. I think I can slip that on afterwards. Let's focus concentrate on this. So maybe if this can't be repaired, and it certainly doesn't look like it's going to be, um, 
at least though it could be a useful source of spares if one could find another one. So if you found another, oh, phew, that's, that kind of freaked me out of this then, that flopped open like that. Right, so that's that retractor thing in, there we go. Got my new CR2032. Nothing. Come on, reset. Dead duck, I'm afraid. That's a shame. But let's not, you know, leave it like that. We'll we'll assemble it up. Put it back. Put it back to its original-ish order. So I wonder what happens with these. It's it's always going to be. If you think about it, that the main culprits will be these chemical components, so electrolytics. I mean, that, that's the ones which people are always replacing all the time. They sort of do the uh, games consoles, the first thing they'll do is recap. So it could be still a possibility that that cap, if we put in a correct value, two microfarad, instead of one microfarad, it would work. But uh, I don't know. How much would one persevere? It's tricky. If these, are, these are probably quite rare. If you can't find them on eBay, though, you're never going to find them, are you? One last go, come on. Oh, that would have been so nice. I'm looking at the screen at a diff different angles and stuff to see if there's any life, but no, there's just no life at all. So that's a big shame. We've wasted our time. It was a failure. So the UC110 calculator is going back to its owner. Unrepaired. Dum, 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 dum. By the way, if any of you watching does know where one can get hold of a UC110, I'm sure the owner of this would love to know, and uh, maybe he'll make you a little offer. A little offer. As ever, thanks for watching.